Hey, it's Jag, and today I got some troubleshooting to do. I was going to uh, film my uh, startup procedure, we'll call it startup procedure, um, what to do the first time you um, are checking out a pedal you've just finished building, troubleshooting some basic things to make sure um, it, it is or isn't going to work, just doing the basic tests and actually this one doesn't work. So we'll get to that in a bit, I do know what the problem is um, and we'll resolve that. Uh, so that's going to be today's video. Here's my initial testing procedure for a new pedal. Okay, so when we first finish a pedal, um, we want to uh, do as much as we can to make sure that um, it's going to uh, be working, the circuit is built correctly, and that we aren't going to potentially damage it by giving power to it uh, if we've got something in wrong. So always the first thing I do is some tests, uh, is, is a quick and simple test uh, before I put power to it um, and that is if it's a true bypass pedal uh, just to check that in bypass mode the signal is actually passing through from the input to the output in a, in a true bypass pedal um, when you are bypassed whether there's power applied or not the signal that you put in on the input uh, should also appear at the output um, of course if you turn the pedal on uh, and there's no battery, that pass-through will not happen. There's two ways you can do it. One is really obvious, just plug a guitar uh, into the input and then uh, take the output into an amp. Um, if there's no sound, hit the switch. If there's sound, then you know you've got your, your true bypass is, is working. Um, so that's a quick and easy test and you can be pretty much assured that you've at least wired the input-output jacks and at least some of the switch is wired correctly. On a pedal that's not true bypass, um, it, pro it may or may not pass signal uh, without power to it. If it's relay bypass, usually the relays uh, in there uh, in the pedal are defaulted so that if there's no power the relay closes so you will get that pass through. Um, but in other types of uh, a switching you may not get passed through at all, you know, if it's a permanent buffer uh, that's in line in the pedal. So this one is true bypass. So like I say, there's two ways to check it. Uh, I'm, I'm here in the shop, so there's it doesn't make sense for me to go over, fire up an amp, plug in cables, get a guitar, uh, you know, and then switch back and forth to see if it's working. So you can do a simple test with your multimeter, and that is to plug uh, a jack, uh, to plug a patch cable into the input and output on the pedal and then just check uh, tip to tip whether you've got continuity between them. So you can either set that to your uh, diode check if, or your beep check if it makes a, a beep or you can just set it to a low resistance and you can see when we connect the, the, two, uh, the, the two clips together we get a, a, a zero ohms reading when it's not connected, it's infinite. So we can connect our, our, our uh, alligator clips to the tips of these jacks. And right now you can see we're getting infinite. Uh, that means that the pedal is either not working or is not bypassed. So we're going to hit the switch. And there you see we get a, a direct connection between tip to tip. So it just wasn't bypassed. So right now the pedal is bypassed and we are getting passed through tip to tip. So we know that our jacks are, are wired uh, properly. Um, and uh, we have a pretty good idea that the switch is probably okay. For the next test, we want to see if uh, the power actually is working in the pedal. So what I do with that, make sure you leave it uh, bypassed so that you know it's bypassed. Um, and then what we can do is we can plug uh, a, a uh, we can plug a patch cable into the input. Uh, as I said, that's where it switches the power on and off. And then what we're going to do is we're going to connect the battery just to one side of the battery clip. So now I'm going to um, switch it so the pedal's not bypassed. And then I'm just going to quickly uh, touch uh, the 
connection on the battery clip to the battery and see if we get a light or not. And no, we don't. So you want to do that as brief as possible. Most of the components in this pedal, if they're in backwards or, or, or in wrong, they probably aren't going to burn out, especially if you do just a quick test like that. So right away, we know that there's something wrong with, uh, with the pedal. Something's not working right. So I'm going to put that back in bypass just so I know where that's at. Because we didn't get a light, it does not necessarily mean the pedal isn't working. We might have just put the, uh, uh, the LED in backwards. Most pedals, whether the LED is in backwards or in at all, um, will still work. You just don't have that indicator light. So it could be that the LED is just in backwards or not soldered in properly. It also could be that we've just missed a connection somewhere. So the first thing we need to do is, is a visual inspection. And we start by just looking, uh, checking that all the components uh, seem to be soldered in solidly. You can take a, 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 a screwdriver and you can see if anything seems to be loose. Uh, from the top, you can't really see all the solder connections, but you can get an idea if there's solder uh, on that pad uh, to the lead. Uh, and none of the components are, are wiggling. You can you can be pretty sure that you've uh, you've soldered things well. Um, so if you don't find any problem with that, check that your diodes and your electrolytic capacitors are in the right way around. Um, same thing with uh, transistors. There's no transistors in this circuit. But you want to look and just make sure that air, everything is oriented the right direction. You also want to make sure that you've put the IC in properly. So I talked about that notch. Uh, there's the notch at the top of the IC here. And that's supposed to match to uh, the notch in the IC socket. Uh, also on the circuit board, there's a representation of where that notch needs to go when you put the socket in. So if that's all right, um, you you know you don't have a problem there so your diodes are oriented the right way around your IC socket and IC are in the right way around and if all your electrolytics are in the right way around uh, then you've got even more troubleshooting to do because uh, the problem is not really apparent uh, also you can check that all your wires are solid and, and going to the right pins like I say with our initial test we're pretty sure that was that was correct but never think of a reason not to check something also check your battery connector and your um, uh, your uh, adapter jack make sure those are wired correctly uh, there's a couple of things you could have your battery wired in backwards you could have the adapter jack wired backwards or also on the adapter jack it's also a switched jack just like using the stereo jack on the input to turn the pedal on and off the DC adapter jack um, uses a, a, a switch to disconnect the battery when you plug the adapter in I've gone through all of this um, and uh, as I say I do know where the problem is I'm just going to continue with some of the basic troubleshooting things because I'm going to have to take this board out to resolve the problem anyway so I'm not going to show you the problem just yet but I will uh, once we go through all of this um, initial visual inspection we've done half the visual inspection we also need to look under the board by the way you may have noticed when I had it like this it says what is this on here I'm still not telling you what it is until I do the playthrough okay so we've got the board out so uh, the rest of this visual inspection and troubleshooting um, we need to um, look at all our solder connections on the bottom make sure the pads look good if you recall I made two suggestions in, in the previous videos uh, for checking that one would be to use a jeweler's loop to get a really good look at the pads um, the other is to use a flashlight and shine it across the board so I do both of those things I'll I use the flashlight first and just kind of take a look at whether uh, something's really obviously not soldered properly or not connected and then I take the jeweler's loop and I do a quick inspection uh, and it can be tedious but you want to look at all the connections and make sure they look good um, sometimes you will see a connection and it can look like the solder is either kind of sunken in around the wire that might be a bad connection and sometimes it looks like the solder is actually cracked and that can happen uh, on a dry solder joint so if you see any that don't look quite right 
touch them up whether you think they're uh, correct or not. I have uh, one lead on here that I'm looking at right now that does look like it might not have enough solder. Um, I know that's not the problem spot. Like I say, I already know where the problem spot is. But I'm going to touch up that little spot right now. Again, never think of a reason not to check anything. And it's also always possible that you have two problems. So, as I say, I already know what the problem is. But if you look at these two pads, there's nothing coming through these pads are soldered in. That's because that's where the problem component is and I've already taken it out. Um, so in terms of troubleshooting, that would be a real obvious thing if you had empty holes and you didn't intend them to be empty. As I say in this case, I've taken that component out. So if you recall, uh, in, in both of the videos, part one and part two of the mystery pedal build, I several times I said uh, your electrolytics are polarized, polarized and they'll and have, have a little, little white, white straight, straight down the side with an arrow, arrow usually with a minus, minus in it. So make sure you get your plus and minus correct. correct. And here again, one thing that you uh, want to make sure you check is just that you've got them oriented right. And even here again, diodes, uh, electrolytic capacitors and transistors are the things that are most commonly put in the wrong way around. I also said, those are the things you want to always double check. And again, I repeated, always double check those things and triple check those things. So, what's the problem? Well, I did check all my components. It's really easy, especially when you've spent an hour, two hours, three hours, maybe a day building a pedal to get uh, what we call motor set and just go, yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. All the other ones were right, so that's right. Um, I missed that I had a component in backwards. Like I said, uh, check your diodes, make sure they're the right way around uh, in, in the circuit, and they are. Uh, there's no transistors to get right. Uh, the, the IC is in properly. I've checked that. And it took me a while to find this, because like I say, you get motor set, and it's like, no, no, they, they all look right. Two of them look right, so all three of them must be right. Y you tend to look too quickly. Well, if you look uh, here, and you'll see this one's loose, because that's the problem one. I was looking at it, and this is the positive side, and I'm like looking at it, and okay, negative is on the negative side, positive is on the positive side, and on this capacitor, negative is to negative, positive is to positive, and then I looked at this one, and I got negative to positive on this one right here. Uh, you can see it wobbling, because I've already desoldered it. So that capacitor is in backwards, and that capacitor is part of the power supply. So the power supply is not working at all because that capacitor is in backwards. Uh, like I say, on uh, a pedal like this, it's only 9 volts, and not a lot of current is drawn through this pedal. Um, this component uh, probably took that, that brief instant of power being applied uh, without any issues. It probably hasn't failed. That said, you want to make sure you're not putting a bad component back in. So I've taken this out. Uh, I'm going to turn it around put it in the right way. But before I do that, I want to make sure that this capacitor is working. So this is a 47 microfarad um, electrolytic capacitor. So what I'm going to do is take my, my meter, switch it to uh, capacitance, uh, 200 microfarad, and we're going to connect the positive lead to the positive connection on the capacitor. And we'll connect the negative. And we'll just see that we, yes, we're, we're getting 44.9 microfarad, 44.8. That's close enough to 47 microfarad. So this capacitor has not failed. It took that, that brief hit. So we're going to solder that back in. And uh, then we'll do all the same tests again. Um, I don't need to put the board and everything back into the enclosure till I'm sure I'm getting uh, getting some lights. If I'm getting lights, I can uh, I will assume that that was the only problem and that it's fixed. Um, you can also 
take the whole thing without putting it in the closure and actually go test it uh, before you put everything in the enclosure. Uh, I just don't like having everything flopping around loose. You could have a, a, a jack kind of short itself to something and, and you might think the pedal's not working when you just need to get a component away from the other components. So we'll solder this in. Uh, we'll make sure it's the right way around. This can be kind of difficult. It's not like when you're first putting the components in and you got these long leads. I've got about an eighth, in, an eighth of an inch, maybe even a little less, of, of the leads sticking out here. They're going to just make it into those pads and through to the other side. Another thing that I do, I've got the component in there. There's not enough lead to keep that component from falling out when I turn the board over. I could use the tape trick, but sometimes the tape doesn't hold things down tight enough uh, that those short leads will come through enough to be soldered. So it's a little bit nerve-wracking, but you need to put your finger on the component, hold it snug to the board, turn it over, and then solder one of those uh, leads in the pad. So this is a time where you're going to want to work sort of quickly. You want to get some solder on the tip. You want to get enough solder to tack that in uh, on the one side, and then you can take your time and, and solder uh, the component in properly. And uh, that looks pretty good. So yeah, the component's not wobbling around anymore. Now I will uh, solder the other lead in, and then I'm just going to retouch the one that I just tacked to make sure everything's soldered uh, solidly. So that's that capacitor soldered back in the right way around. Don't assume you got it right. You got it wrong once already. So just check it again. Make sure it's in the right orientation. Everything looks good there. And uh, again, before we put it back in the, uh, in the enclosure, we're going to test it. So I'm going to start by doing all the same tests. I'm going to make sure I know if, if the pedal is bypassed or not so that I know which way to switch things when I apply the power. You also want to be careful about how much you're, you're potentially uh, stressing the wires going to the jacks and components. Uh, they aren't really meant to be moved around a lot. This is stratted wire so it can take some of that movement but if you built this with uh, solid core wire like we did in the triwatt, um, you can't really move those wires too many times before they'll break. And there we go. So the pedal's in bypass mode right now. So we're going to do the quick power test again. So I only need to leave a jack plugged into the input jack so that battery power uh, will get applied to the circuit when I, I connect the battery. I know we're bypass right now, so I'm going to take it out of bypass so that when I connect the battery up, um, if everything's working, I should see the LED light. Again, connect the battery with one tab, and then I'm just going to slide the battery snap just so the positive side is touching the positive terminal on the battery snap. And I got light, so so that seems to have fixed the problem. This does not guarantee that there isn't another problem in the pedal. Uh, just because we're getting lights, it means that uh, the power uh, circuitry is working. Um, at least it's getting to the LED. We know that our bypass is working. Uh, the next thing we have to do is plug it in uh, and, and do a test of the pedal. So uh, I will do that and come back shortly and let you know if the pedal is working or not. Um, you're going to have to wait to hear the pedal uh, until I do the playing video. Well, success! Both pedals are now working. So uh, the problem with the gold one was that uh, reversed electrolytic capacitor. Switching that resolved the problem completely. Um, I did, while I was taking things out, uh, uh, move some of the wires a little too much and one of the ones from the uh, adapter jack uh, became intermittent. It wasn't broken right off but it was really loose so I resoldered that as well uh, but that was a really minor issue. Um, that's another point though when you're troubleshooting or when you're uh, when you're first firing up and you've got the back off of the uh, uh, the pedal uh, it might be sounding good and and seeming to work well but one thing you should do is just take a, a chopstick or something and just wiggle the wires around to see if anything uh, shuts off, turns on, whether you get any noise or things like that. That's how I found that loose wire. 
uh, on here. So that's all fixed up. Uh, the other pedal uh, worked right out of the gate. Uh, they both sound amazing. Uh, this one, uh, when I first plugged it in, I probably spent an hour and a half just playing with this one. Uh, it sounded so good. And just now I spent another hour playing with both of them. So they sound great. Uh, so look for that uh, playing video coming up. I'm a little bit rusty on playing. I've been spending a lot of time shooting videos and building things and haven't been playing as much as I uh, normally do. So um, I'm hoping to have that playing video out uh, maybe in a week. Uh, but uh, over the next couple of weeks, I will uh, will go through that and uh, play it through and, and video that and release it. Uh, maybe it'll be a Christmas Eve or Christmas Day release. Uh, uh, let me know what you think about that in the comments. So, like always, uh, check my band One Soul Through Us. Links are below. Uh, like and subscribe, comment, give me a thumbs up. Uh, anything uh, you do like that helps my videos get viewed more. So, thanks for watching. Uh, we'll see you in the next video.